my name is Hadija Hassan and I work for GLAMI, Girls Livelihood and Mentorship Initiative. I have uh, been working with this organization since 2014 as a mentor and then in 2016 I got promoted to a program manager for one of GLAMI's program called um, KISA. So just going back to last year uh, in March, I think, yeah, it was in March, uh, just like today, yeah, the government announced that the schools are going to be uh, closed. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, I was very shocked with, the, uh, with that announcement because I remember I was at the office with my fellow staff, we were getting prepared to go to schools because our work, uh, uh, our work is dealing with working with uh, secondary school girls. So we do partner with schools. So we were getting prepared to go to school, and all of a sudden we received a WhatsApp a message uh, with the government announcement that schools are closed until, like, for a known period of time. So I was shocked. A lot of uh, things were going on, uh, on my mind. Mm -hmm. I felt like things were serious and the situation was uh, becoming worse. That's why the government yeah. even decided to uh, come up with that decision. So a lot of things were going on in my mind. I thought like, what will happen? Is this going to be the end of life? What will happen if maybe I will get infected or my parents or closer uh, friends and relatives will be infected? But I also uh, had something going on in my mind about the lockdown. What will happen if uh, that will also be the decision? Will we be able to handle the whole situation, the lockdown situation? So I was confused. So do my scholars. The scholars were also confused. The girls didn't know what to do and they felt like it was going to an end because there are some of the girls who were about to sit for their final exams just in one month and a half. And uh, just being told that schools are being closed for unknown uh, period of time, it was a confusion to them. So most of them, they also had fear and uh, they didn't know what will be next, what will be, what their fate will be. So. That moment was uh, more of mixed feeling, fear, uh, terrible. Uh, it was a terrible uh, moment, but also it was a scary moment. That's, that's what I can really say. The Glammy team moved really quickly, though, to connect with girls and with their parents as they returned home. And, and you did so many things to really um, uh, help the girls work through their fears about coming back and taking their exams, about um, issues they were facing at home. Can you walk me through some of the challenges that you helped girls overcome and some of the ways that you helped girls through this difficult time returning home? Okay, so uh, when the schools, uh, when, when, when we knew that schools are going to be closed, we had uh, quickly to contact the uh, liaisons, the teachers that uh, act as a bridge between us and the school. We had to contact them to be sure like all girls, uh, the, the status, the situation and how girls are doing at that moment receiving that announcement. And uh, the good thing at, the, at that moment, it wasn't that much difficult for the girls to go back home, especially the ones that are in boarding school. Uh, so mm -hmm. after there, now as an organization, we were worried about the well-being of our girls when they go back home. So uh, we couldn't just sit and relax because schools are closed. And as the result, we uh, brainstormed and come up with ways that we will continue to help our girls while they are home. Uh, among the things that we did was uh, the focus was on the girls' health when they are home. We focused on that area, but we also focused on their academic um, 
academic progress because we knew one day things we had hope that things will go back to normal and they will go back to school so that's where we also had our focus and another thing that we focused on is just uh, the life at home in general so having that in mind we were able to initiate some activities uh, the fact that we had like a good track of uh, our scholars, uh, we were able also to have like the number, the, the contact information for the parents and uh, to some of the girls. So we came up with an approach of um, sending text messages to the girls and the messages were focusing on uh, providing information about COVID-19 but also uh, providing information about um, some of the lessons that we have been teaching the girls in KISA classes while they are in school. We came up, we, we identified some lessons that will continue helping girls while they are at home. For example, uh, lessons about um, keeping the girls more resilient while they are still at home, but also lessons relating to health issues because who knows, uh, there are a lot, a lot of temptations while the girls are home. So we tried also to remind them on that. But we also provided uh, information. I mean, we, we provided lessons about um, studying skills. Uh, so the, the good thing uh, with the, the communication that we we're having with uh, parents and scholars, the parents became uh, very connected with us and sometimes they could call us and try to uh, ask us like, hey, we heard about this and this. Is that true? The government has said that about, uh, COVID, about the pandemic. So it's like they trusted us on the information that we were giving them. Yeah, so that's number one thing that uh, we did. Um, when when we, we initiated this conversation with the girls, there are some of the girls that shared some challenges with us. And uh, for example, so the challenges also varies from one girl to another. And this sometimes it's also because of the family background. So some of the girls, uh, they felt like everything has changed at home they no longer have the normal life that they used to have when they go back home for holidays. For example, sitting with their friends, talking to them, but also the whole idea of studying at home. Most of them used to do group discussions when they are home, but at this moment they can't do that. And they have only to rely uh, on uh, personal studies of which it was a little bit difficult to some of the girls uh, with, uh, difficulties and challenges in having personal studies. So with that, we decided like it's good now maybe for the girls that have uh, mobile, that they have smartphones, maybe we can start a WhatsApp group so that uh, they can get time to discuss with their fellows, but also get time to share materials from one another and share websites that others can access more study, study materials. And for the girls that didn't have access to um, smartphone, then we decided to pair them with the girls with access to smartphone so that they will be communicating and uh, proceed to share uh, materials, but also maybe uh, question papers for the past uh, examinations so that all of them will benefit from us and uh, from themselves. Uh, there are those that shared um, the, the, the life at home has changed because of COVID-19 and as we know the pandemic has also affected the economic uh, situation, economic status for many families. So. Uh, some of the girls shared that life is very difficult at home and uh, the parents are trying to go out like every day looking for things that can uh, make them in some amount of uh, money just to help the family survive. So the girls' uh, role changed to become the family caretakers when parents are away. So uh, the challenge these girls were facing is like to balance their time 
to uh, complete all the home responsibilities and at the same time have time for their studies. So girls like this also, we had time to walk them through the challenge, helping them uh, create their daily day-to-day -day schedule so that they can balance uh, all responsibilities that they have. And others also told us they don't have materials like parts. So for the girls like that, we also try to support them by providing them with materials of such kind. And uh, we even went far and tried also to buy books for some uh, students and distributed the books to the, uh, to the girls so that uh, their um, life uh, during that period of time could be a little bit easy and uh, reduce even the pressure and the fear that they have. I think, I mean, all of that is so incredible. I wanna um, just back up a minute and underscore a lot of what you said with some numbers that I've seen from Glammy because I think it's just, helps to put into context how remarkable your reach was. I mean, parents have always been an important part of Glammy programming with your mentorship programs. You involve parents because you can't just help a girl at school. You, it needs to be the community and, the, and her family at home. So you've been collecting phone information for families and you had phone information on file, I think for 6,000 families at the time COVID hit um, because you'd been working hard to collect that. And I think, I mean, that just seems like a remarkable um, aspect of your ability to pivot so quickly and to start these WhatsApp study groups with girls and their families. Um, I know you guys made 18,000 phone calls, is that right? And about almost 200,000 text messages in just a couple of months, um, which I think is amazing. And, um, and also just the fact that you were able to care for girls so holistically, um, helping her with her health, her mental health, with her academic needs, academic materials, um, and, and still underscoring all of the glammy programming that teaches that confidence, resilience, and leadership. And I mean, what skills could you possibly need more at a time of a global pandemic than those, those, um, those skills? So I think all of that is incredible. Um, so tell me, what did it work? Did the girls come back to school? Schools reopened June 29th last year in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you saw some, some really positive news when schools reopened. Um, tell me about that and how it felt to get the girls back in school. Oh, so when the schools reopened, when we first had the announcement that the first group of the students will go back to school, the one that we are about to sit for the final exams, uh, that gives all of us hope. And we thought like uh, in few days or few months, the government will again announce for the remaining students to go back to school. So it was like two weeks before the date that the students will be required to go back to school when the announcement, uh, announcement came out. And uh, we were very quick again and very flexible. We had to call parents because the parents have already trusted us with uh, providing them with uh, correct and accurate information. So once we had uh, the announcement, we had to quickly call the parents and uh, talk to them about what the government has said and ensuring that uh, they are in a mode, uh, mode of preparing their girls to go back to school. So we are happy and lucky that uh, many parents were very supportive to their girls, but we have few that uh, were very supportive, but they are very honest that they cannot um, take back the girls to school on the announced date because of the economic uh, situation that they have. They do not have money for transportation and money to buy some materials uh, for their daughters. So as an organization, again, we had to uh, jump in and help uh, the girls by providing them with the uh, money for transportation, but also uh, buying them uh, some materials when they arrived at school. So uh, we, we also, when we were talking to the girls, they also mentioned that they are very, they have this fear and they don't know what will happen because they stayed home for, uh, for, for quite a long time. And uh, you know, 
they believe that when you're at school, the preparations that you get for examinations, it's quite different from when you're home. So they had this fear and didn't know like what will happen. So again, we prepared for encouragement talks when the girls uh, get back to school and we had to go around all our uh, partners, all our uh, partner schools to provide an encouragement talk so that uh, the, so, the, the, the students can go back to um, the normal situations and concentrate, but also focus to their studies. And this time, we didn't even do that for our girls. We did that for all the students within the schools, all uh, students that were about to sit for their exams, because we knew this is needed for almost everyone. Yeah, and the second group after like few weeks, the remaining students were also um, taken back to school. And um, at that time we had, we had to put other initiatives like uh, helping uh, the schools with the um, materials that can help students to prevent themselves from the COVID-19. We, we, we provided schools with uh, hand washing stations, we provided schools with sanitizers, we provided schools, uh, some schools with uh, masks. So uh, we provided so many staffs depending with the needs uh, of the school, just to make sure that the girls, when they are going back to school, uh, they will be uh, at, a safe, at a safe place. Yeah, so uh, that's what they did. But we said even if they are going back, our concentration right now and focus will be on their academic because they have lost so many time uh, staying home. And we even decided to change our curriculum. Instead of going to uh, schools, meeting our girls every week, we changed it to meeting them after every two weeks. So we, we, we met them like uh, twice in a month. Yeah, just to provide them with time to focus more because there was so much pressure to the girls and so much pressure to the teachers. They want to finish all that uh, required for the second term of school and at the same time compensate for the uh, time that they lost during the first uh, school term. Yeah. So, but that wasn't all you did. I, that is a lot. But during the time when girls, you were visiting them every other week, Lammy also took another creative approach. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the radio programming pilot that you did to reach girls when you weren't in schools with them weekly? Okay, so, uh, you know, we say COVID-19, it's a pandemic, but uh, we feel like it's something that opened uh, many people's mind and uh, made uh, people to think outside the box on uh, new approaches that can be used to keep helping uh, girls, but also the community at large. So as an organization, we came with an idea of uh, starting a radio program and uh, uh, from being an idea, we were able to start implementing it. So it was a very good experience. And I also happened to be a uh, first presenter of the first session, like introducing it to the uh, community. So it was a good experience indeed. But the thing that uh, I learned out of the radio uh, program, it's... Um, we as an organization, our focus is to teach girls and we get these girls uh, at schools. But with the radio program, we are able to reach our girls and the girls that are not in the program, but the parents also uh, were able to know what we teach uh, the girls, but they also learned how they can support their girls through difficult times so that they can reach their uh, dreams. But uh, people like uncles, aunties, uh, brothers, sisters that are not in our programs were also able to, bon to benefit with what we were, uh, we were, what we aired. Um, well, I think all of that work is so remarkable, Hadija, that you were able to reach the entire community and um, just, I think, true to form for Glammy that it's it's not just about the girl and all of her needs, but it's around about the people around her in the community. And I think the radio program is just such an exciting um, tool that you guys use to connect with people. And I hope that's something we can find funding to help you guys continue um, in the future. Um, and I wanna just close out with one um, last question. 
it's been a hard year and there has been so much that you guys have done to take measures to take care of girls. Um, I wonder if there is just a moment for you or a story that um, that comes to mind for you about the last year and where you thought like, gosh, like this is why we do this programming. This is what we're trying to create in these girls. Um, is there a story or a moment that shines for you um, that shows that? Yeah, so um, I'm so very proud with uh, the girls that we do mentor. And there are so many uh, stories of hope and encouragement to us that we do provide the trainings to the girls. Stories that uh, make us feel like we should keep doing what we are doing to many more girls out there. Uh, but most of the time when someone asks me a question like that, the story that always moves me and um, when I think of it, I feel joy. It's the story of the, a group of girls who organized an online gathering to teach people how to make masks during uh, when they were home uh, during the corona, I mean, the, 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 the outbreak, outbreak of the pandemic. So these girls with the help help of their mentors they were able to uh, organize an online uh, training where they taught uh, people on how to make simple masks without uh, uh, which is not costful but at the same time it's easy to make because you can get materials around you it's not difficult to get the materials that you want uh, for making the masks. So the aim for these girls to do that was to campaign for uh, the measures and preventive measures that uh, are used to fight against the COVID-19. Uh, and uh, they felt like there is no any excuse for people not to follow the precautions, people not to wear masks. That's why they decided to come up with that uh, idea. So I consider those girls as champions also, uh, champions of fighting against COVID-19. They showed that they are leaders, they showed that they are confident, confident, just uh, thinking and taking a step to go out there so that they can share their ideas and what they think is uh, best to everyone. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, but uh, they also proved to us that they, um, they, uh, they, they are practicing the leadership skills that they get during uh, KISA classes. So I was very impressed, very happy. And uh, I'm just, you know, be, I'm, I was very happy being uh, part of that change that has been initiated by our girls. Yeah. I love that. So, well, Hadija, thank you. Thanks to all of Glammy for the incredible amount of work and um, care that you've put into taking care of your scholars always, not just during the pandemic. Um, at Africade, we're so grateful to be able to support your work and I know everyone watching is too. So thank you so much for your time today and um, just keep up the amazing work. Thank you for all you've done. <laughs>